Hey guys, today I'm back in Scrap Mechanic and I want to try making a 3D printer. Now I don't really have much more to say, so let's get right into it. So I'm just starting out in the sandbox now, and the first thing I want to do is just put it out in a lift and build up a bit of a concrete pad. Now what I want to do is start working on the positioning system. Now this seemed like the most important part of the printer, since if I can't get a specific position to be at, I can't really print anything. So once I have this concrete pad completed, you can see I'm building up some walls, and these walls are going to contain some wheels. Now as I rotate these wheels back and forth, you can see I'm putting one in now, I'll be able to move back and forth the print head, and if I have a set of these for each of the axes, I should be able to print in exactly one position. So after I got that first wheel in place, actually I did delete one section of the wall to make it a little bit shorter, but now when I try to hit it, it's not going anywhere. And to start dealing with this, I'm actually deleting the short wall and replacing it with wood, that's just to make it a little bit easier to see. But the real problem is I need to drop it in place like this. Now once I do that, it looks about the same normally, but when I hit it, you can see here it's able to move. Now it quickly ends up falling out of the channel, and that's kind of a problem. So you see I'm raising up the wall again, and I'm using this larger wheel instead. But as I tried to drop this in place, this also kind of fell out of the channel. So I dropped there from a lower height, and once I did this, it seemed to be a little bit better. It still fell out of the channel when I hit it, but the sledgehammer is a little unrealistic. Normally, it's not going to be getting hit with that. So what I wanted to do was also add in one to the other side and see if I get some increased stability. So after I did that, I'm also adding a wheel in in the middle, and this is to keep everything from rotating back and forth, because without this wheel, it's actually kind of unstable. Once I had that, I'm adding in a controller block, and what this controller block does is rotates the wheel 360 degrees, rotates all of them 360 degrees, and you can see here when I hit this button, it activates it, and I can actually move everything forward. And this actually didn't seem too bad at all, but I was a little bit worried about how it would perform in the long run. After working on it for a little bit longer, this is what it ended up with, and it's not great. So you can see how slow it is, because I need it to rotate 15 degrees at a time to make sure that I can address every single block individually. But the main problem is that as I hit the button for it to go backward, you can see here it rubs up against the wall for just a little bit. And that's a problem, because that means it's falling out of position a little bit, and that's why it rubbed up against the wall. And after it does that, it actually fell forward a little bit, which means that now it's slightly out of position again. And if I can't get a concrete position of where this is, because it keeps sliding back and forth, eventually blocks are going to get placed out of position, and if I have prints going for over an hour, it's definitely going to be a problem. So I wanted to go for a piston design like this instead, and you can see here I have two pistons stacked on top of each other, and they can very quickly get from one position to another, and they snap back right where they need to go. So these pistons seem to be way better, so I put the positioning system on the back burner for now, since I had something that seemed pretty good, and I wanted to work on the block placement system, which is also incredibly important. Now the first thing I was thinking was just dropping blocks through a little tube, and you can see here I have that demoed, this block just falls straight down and gets set right where it needs to go. Now if I use a little glass tube like this, I can push blocks through this tube and have them drop down exactly when I want them to, and in theory I should be able to print exactly how I want to. So after I have that tube completed, you can see here I'm putting down a piston, and on the piston I'm putting down a block, that's the block that's going to push the other blocks, and to activate the piston, just temporarily I'm putting in a push button. Now as I push that button, you can see here it pushes out the piston, which pushes the block, and I should be able to to use that to push in other blocks into the tube and then have them drop down that hole. And you can see here kind of how that works, they seem to fall right into that tube, and it's not that great. So the blocks sort of randomly rotate as they fall down, and they just don't perfectly fall into position, and they also jitter around a lot, you can see just a lot of random vibration, and I figure that's going to cause a lot of lag, and also they seem to just randomly fall into the tube, and sometimes they fall a little bit off kilter, sometimes they sort of just fall off to the side, sometimes multiple fall into the tube, and it's overall just not working out that well, and honestly I was thinking this design just was not going to work, so what I wanted to try instead was a vacuum pump. Now so here it can drop blocks directly below it, which is exactly what I need. So here what I'm doing is just put one down like this, and I put down a button to control it, but you can see here when I press the button, nothing happens at all. And the main problem is just that I have no blocks feeding into it, so to do that, I just need to put down a chest. Now this system is way better than before, because the blocks in the chest are just held as items, and they're not actually like blocks, so the lag is going to be significantly less since the blocks aren't just loose items that have collision. And also when I press the button, it drops the block down right where it needs to go, and locks it in place, so it's not a loose block at all, and that's a really good thing, because that means that once it's on the ground, it can't just vibrate out of place, it's actually stuck there. So that just seemed like it was going to be exactly what I needed it to be. And I'm going back to the positioning system because there's just a small wrinkle in it. Now the main issue with this system is that I don't really want to control each piston individually. Instead, I want to put in a single binary number, and I want to have that number correspond to how many pistons are being expanded out. So what I did here is hook up the first piston, and if I press any of the switches, it expands it out. And that makes sense, because the first piston should expand out if I'm putting in a number 1 or greater. And also I hooked up the the fifth switch, which ended
ended up being easy as well. Because that, as long as I have the last switch pressed, it should expand out. And if it's not pressed, it shouldn't. Now the switches in the middle are a little more awkward with their logic, but you can see here I have the whole thing completed and I'm trying to expand out the pistons one at a time. And you can see, got it there. And it means I have eight unique positions. Now I didn't really like that though, because I thought that an eight by eight print bed was a little small and I wanted to expand this out to 16 pistons. And that means I'll have 16 unique positions to be able to put blocks at. And that ends up being really convenient. That also means I'll have to add one more switch on the input, which isn't too big of a deal. And the logic here is actually pretty simple to add. It was just 16 more gates. And after hooking up the switch to all of those and just making sure I have everything hooked up the way I want it to be, you can see here it expands out the way I'd want. And overall, seems pretty good. But that's only half of it because I also need to add in the controls for the Y axis. Now these are actually basically exactly the same as the X axis controls, except that they're facing a different direction. So after I got all those pistons in place, I put down all the logic again. I'm not sure why I didn't just copy this over, probably should have, but I noticed here that this is kind of sagging a lot. And if I walk up to it, you can see here I can stretch it out quite a bit. And this means that there's going to be a lot of slack in the mechanism. And I was worried that over time it was going to lose its position because it was going to be so loose. So I had some ideas of how to fix that. But since the logic for this was looking pretty good. What I wanted to do was just cover it all up and I could separate it from the rest of this machine and I can copy it on the lift. And once I have it saved, what I could do is start to put it on the main machine, which I'm actually going to start using to build a 3D printer. So you can see here, I'm putting that in place now and I'm also rotating it 90 degrees. And that's just to make it a little bit easier to see everything. And because I accidentally covered up all the logic gates, I'm using some lights to show which ones are on at any given time. So since I have all this wired up here, you can see as I press the switches, different lights come on. And I just put down a second set as well for the X coordinates and putting them right next to each other just ends up being really convenient because that means I'll have all the data just be in one place. So with all that done, you can see I'm building up the back of this a little bit. I'm starting to work on the pistons for the x-axis. Now to put those in place, you can see I'm stacking them pretty much exactly the same way as before. And once I have those put in place, I just expand out the back a little bit more to give room for them to all be expanded. Once I have that budgeted there, what I'm doing is putting in this glass tube, and this is to hopefully keep them in place. Now I don't really want them swinging back and forth at all, since that was sort of the main problem I was having. So hopefully having the glass there will keep them from falling out of line. And with those x-axis pistons done, you can see here I'm putting down a lot of glass next to them. And this is for those y-axis pistons to ride on, and this is hopefully going to keep them from moving up and down at all. Now once I have that, I'm just putting down all those pistons, and I could put down some glass, but unfortunately I can't completely encase these like I did with the x-axis pistons, since they do need to be able to move side to side, but I can encase them pretty well. And once I have that done, you can see here I'm putting down a lot more glass, and this is for those pistons to ride on when they're fully expanded. Now once I have all that glass put in place, I'm actually deleting a large section, and this is the section where the actual build area is. So finally here you can see this is the area I can actually address, and just toggling in some random switches to adjust some random positions. You see here as I run over to it, it's on top of a random square and this actually looks pretty good. So finally with that done, I can encase the y-axis pistons just a little bit better by putting a large glass sheet on top of it and hopefully that'll keep them from popping out on top. Now I lifted this thing up just because I wanted to do some work under it and I crushed myself just to see what would happen and So I lifted it up once again, and after that, I started to build down a little bit. Now I'm putting in some more pistons here, and this was originally going to be for the Z axis. Now I figured I could use decoders in the exact same way I did for the other two axes, but for now I just put down the pistons since I didn't really have anything else to build them on. After that, I lifted it up just a little bit more, and finally put down a vacuum like this. After that, I put down a chest, and you can see here it's actually able to place down almost five blocks below where it is. And that was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was only going to be able to place down like two blocks beneath it, but that was actually pretty cool, and it was kind of wonderful how far I was going to be able to reach. But before that, what I wanted to do was just build up a bit of a back wall. And you can see there, this is what I have. But you can see here, as I lift it up more, it's almost placing like nine or 10 blocks below where it's supposed to be. And that was honestly a lot. So I was thinking at this point, I might not even need any Z axis controls at all. And this might honestly just be able to reach far enough to place anywhere I need it to. Now you also see I'm putting down some wood like this, and this just to define the build area. So any of the blocks inside that area, I could place blocks on, and just make it a little bit easier for me to see exactly what I'm doing. So I put down a vacuum pump on the very top of the machine like this. And I was just curious to see how far it could reach and it couldn't reach all the way from the top here. But if I put down a platform about halfway down, you can see if I get in this chair, it is able to place on that. And that distance was definitely good enough for me to build this on. So I figured, honestly, I didn't need any Z-axis controls at all. And I just put down a vacuum pump like this. After I do that, I could just use the X and Y controls and I could just place anywhere I want to. So I put down the vacuum pump and I just put down the chest as well. And once I did that, I just shortened up the whole machine a little bit. And you can see here, it's able to place in that corner. So it's able to reach. 
reach. After you do that, just put down some legs on all the sides to keep it from falling over when it's not on the lift. And one thing I did was turned on all of the Y pistons so it went out as far as it could. And I noticed a small problem. You can see here it's actually one block away from the very edge, and I didn't misplace the edge at all. It's actually sagging just a little bit. So to fix that problem, I was going to put down a guide rail for it to ride on, and you can see here, once I put down this block, it ends up lifting up the whole mechanism slightly. So I extended out that bar a little bit more, and finally here you can see when I put down in the same control, it actually is in that corner. So it should be placing correctly now, and just to solidify that, I also expanded that bar out to the other side, and it seemed pretty good. And with that done, I wanted to start working on the mechanism to store all of the data to program in all the instructions. And to do that, you can see I'm putting in a bunch of sensors now, and if I turn on all of their color modes, that means that only when they see a block that's painted white above them will they actually send out a positive signal. And this is really useful, because what I can do is pass over them a bunch of concrete blocks, and if the block above them is painted, they'll end up having a positive signal, and if they don't, they won't send out any signal at all. And that means that I can easily program this just by painting some blocks. So to do that here, you can see I'm putting in a bunch of concrete, and I'm just randomly painting some blocks right now just to test it out. And once I have that, I'm just hooking up the sensors to the inputs of the decoders. And with that done, put in a switch, put it up to the piston, and I hit the switch. And you can see here that the printing head ends up moving quite fast, but it moves right into position, and it ends up settling on that spot. So that seemed pretty solid, and I was going to use this basic design to create the first of my two mechanisms to control the printer. Now here you can see I actually ended up deleting it, but I'm actually just rotating it 90 degrees here since I have a little bit more room to play with in this direction. And once I end up building the path for the concrete to ride on, put back in all the sensors, and what I'm doing is stacking in a bunch of pistons just like I did before. Now, I realize this is probably not a great way to do specifically this mechanism, because I could just use a controller block and a single piston to expand it out one block at a time, but the thing with that is that I couldn't just move it to any arbitrary position, which I don't know if I necessarily need to do that, but I now don't have the ability to do that. And also, I already designed all the circuitry for this, so I know exactly how to run this, so there's really no reason not to. Now, you see there I painted in all the data, and I have a counter in place here. Now, all this counter does is counts from 0 to 7, and then from 7 to 0. And this means I'll be able to move the concrete all the way, expand out all the pistons to the furthest extent, and then be able to pull them individually all the way in. So you can see how that works here. I'm pushing out all the pistons one at a time, and I should be able to read in this data that I'm painting on these concrete blocks right now. So after I had that done, I hooked it up to this print head, and the program I wrote in should create a diagonal line. So it seems simple enough, and you can see here it's starting to print that in, and it looks pretty good, but when it tries to do a return, it kind of messes up and ends up putting a block in the wrong position. And the whole reason is actually I didn't set the delay long enough, so it didn't have enough time to settle into place. So after I had that done, I ended up letting it run for a little while, and you see here with this improved design, it ended up working out just fine, and it ended up printing all the way up to the print head, and eventually you see it got so close and ended up not being able to print anymore. But otherwise, it looked pretty good, and with that done, I ended up messing around a little bit more with some more designs. So I actually expanded out this mechanism so it can hold a total of 16 unique positions instead of the 8 I had before, and I toggled in a program that just creates a tube that goes straight up. So after I had that done, you see here, program the whole thing in, and let it run. So I'm not going to show a time lapse of this whole print since it was, you know, kind of boring. But you can see here, once the whole thing's done, creates this nice little tube, and this actually had no errors at all. Now, the next thing I did was actually this completely separate design, and it consists of three counters. Now, the whole goal of this is to create a pyramid. So I basically create a bunch of squares stacked on top of each other, and that's how I create my pyramid. So here I started out and just wanted to let it run, and you can see here it's actually missing a block in the very end, but that's actually fine. The reason I did that is that it creates a nice point at the top instead of having a 2x2 two two square at the top. And you can see as it starts to go, it actually messes up a bit. The left side is kind of bare, and it just looks a little odd. And the problem is that one of the counters is resetting a little bit too early, so the square doesn't get to complete, and it ends up creating just a rectangle. So to fix that, I just need to add in a timer block and another logic gate, and then it ended up suppressing that reset signal just a little bit, and totally fixed my problem. So here you can see the full time lapse. It takes quite a while to print this base layer, and this whole print I think took in total about an hour and 40 minutes. I probably could have sped it up with a little bit more special logic, but I was already kind of running low on time for this video, so I didn't want to mess with that too much, and instead I opted to slow down the entire print, and this seemed to mostly be okay, but there are a few errors towards the back of the pyramid, nothing too crazy, it's just when it tries to swing all the way back, it ends up misplacing a single block on like three of the layers, but overall it looks pretty good, and I wouldn't say there's any massive problems like there was in the last print. So here I've slowed it down for the last two blocks, and you can see here, gets this one done, and now it's just homing into the top block, and after that, places it, and looks good.
Now for this last print here, which is probably what I'm going to be showing in the thumbnail, I'm actually breaking it up into six distinct programs. Now, since I can only address 16 unique blocks at a time, what I'm doing is just resetting the program after it prints out 16 blocks, and I could use this to create a larger, more complicated image. Now this also gives me the advantage of being able to switch out the blocks that are in the chest, and I could use this to create different colors. So you can see here I have the inside filled with red, and the outside filled with glass, which is supposed to look more black than it actually is, but there's really no black block that I could just use. So finally here, as I finish up the helmet, it looks pretty good, and this one actually printed with no problems at all. So again, up close, looks pretty good, but I actually switched out the border to be concrete, and then I painted it black just to make it look a little bit better, and you can see here, it looks great. So guys, thanks for watching. It's definitely a fun video to make, probably my favorite project so far in Scrap Mechanic. All the specialized logic for this is a lot of fun, and especially that pyramid program was quite a lot of work to tease all the bugs out of. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and otherwise, until next time.